Well, hello, Pride fans, and welcome to the very first edition of the WB Mason Coast Report right here on GoAfter.com, the Women's Lacrosse Edition with Shannon Smith. I'm Dan Savarino. Thanks so much for joining us, as always. Of course, each and every week you can catch us on here at GoAfter.com. I'm going to break things down what it was the week before and preview the week ahead. And, Coach, let's just talk about what the season is overall. I mean, you look at last year, went to the semifinals, tough loss against Towson, obviously a real heartbreaker towards the end, but overall, how would you look at that entire season for you guys? You learn a lot. It, you know, we had we started off good, and we had a little uh, rough stretch in the middle of our season with a couple of tough losses, and we were able to find our way back. So it shows um, the team's resiliency, and then also their mental toughness out there. So uh, this year's exciting. It's a brand new team, brand new chemistry, and I think our senior class really learned a lot from last year and the year before that. They've come close the past two years of getting what they want in that CAA championship. So it's been really fun to watch them and their leadership with the younger classmen on the team. I know you don't like talking too much about yourself here, but what have you learned from now another year as a coach, really? You've learned a lot over the past, um, you know, two seasons, uh, you know, what to expect, what not to expect, and, and kind of how you roll with certain things that happen and, and how you take it. But I think um, it's been really great. The coaching staff's really great, and, and you learn a lot from them. So I've grown a lot as a coach, and I'm really excited for the season. Well, let's look at some of the things you guys are losing this year. Obviously, up front, Alex Mesnati, who's really more of a midfielder, but Mesnati on the offensive attack. Uh, you, you lose Lindsey McKinnon, Liz Anders, and then in the midfield, Emily Von Holland. Not completely loser. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> and then on the back end, Jamie DiArco. What are you going to miss about all those players? Yeah, they were they were incredible. Um, they always had a passion for the game, and, and they brought it every single game um, out there for the team. And the team always wanted to play hard for them. So we're gonna miss them and, and their leadership. And um, you know, but our juniors from last season, who are now our seniors, really stepped up this year. So we're really excited um, for that to see them continue to grow as a class throughout the season. But um, it's exciting. It's a, like I said, new year, new team, new chemistry. Julia Reamer as well. I'm sorry, Julia. I almost forgot to mention your name. Uh, Emily Von Holland, you bring her back now. She's going to be a volunteer assistant coach. I know she was obviously somebody you look towards leadership over the course of your time here. Why did you bring her in? Yeah, she had a, a great passion for the game, and she really loves Hofstra. She was interested um, in, in coaching, and she had to finish her degree here. So. At the end of last season in May, when the girls come in for their end of the year evaluations, we offered uh, Emily the, the spot at Hofstra to be our volunteer assistant coach. And we're so happy to have her um, on board, part of the coaching staff. She's done a tremendous job for us, and, and she's learning a lot. And uh, So it's really fun to have her on board, and she's a really a great help for us this year. Is she going to be one of those people that's really that you know middle ground between you as the coaches, with Coach Bedford and Molly, as well as really the players, and she really just was one? Yeah, you know, I think it's been an interesting um, transition for her. You know, you have to, you just came out of college, you know, you got to transition into the kids that you're playing with um, and being their coach. But I think the transition's been smooth. The players really respect her, and, and she's been doing a phenomenal job on the field uh, coaching, and she's been working with um, Mike on, on the defensive side of the field, uh, especially having played for him and, and being in the defensive packages that we have. I think she's been a great um, insight, insight to him and, and his defensive philosophy, so it's been really great to have her on staff. Well, it seems like you can't mention Hofstra or women's lacrosse without mentioning these two names. Britton Altamari and April Iod had two of the best players in the conference offensively and then uh, obviously defensively with April being the defensive player of the year. With those two now going to their senior years, and of course there's other seniors that we'll talk about, but with those two going to their senior years, how do you expect them to take another jump in their own game? I, I expect it. You know, we kind of gave them, you know, what we thought they needed to improve on going into their senior year, and they definitely have done it. Uh, April's done a phenomenal job of being a leader of our team and, and really mentoring the younger classmen, and she's done a great job at leading the defense. You know, she was able to take a little bit of a backseat last year with Emily Corzell and Jamie DiArco down there. Um, and, you know, she was still a leader, but now she, she's in the spotlight and, and she is a leader of that defense. So she's been doing a great job. And just her level of consistency every day at practice, you can see that she wants it. Uh, she's working extremely hard, and every day she brings it. She makes every player on that team a better, a better person and a better teammate every day at practice. And, you know, she's fearless. She's, her intensity level is there every single day, and you can see. Like I said, you can see it in her eyes and you can see it in her body language that she wants to win this year and she's going to bring it every single day and make everyone around her better. Well, she's one of the anchors of the D and obviously the big anchor is Kelsey Gregerson between the pipes. How do you expect Kelsey to take her game to another level? We expect it a lot. You know, I think she's been working really hard with uh, like Mike Bedford and Emily Van Hollen on, in 
the defensive side of the field. They've been doing a great job with Kelsey and Alexis Green, uh, really making them quicker, uh, working on their hand-eye coordination, working on their on their steps, working on you know their clearing ability. And, and Kelsey is, is getting better at that. She knew what she needed to work on. We wanted her to become quicker. We wanted her you know to work on her offside a little bit, and and she's and she's doing that. She's we wanted her to speak up a little bit as well, and she's doing that in the defensive side. And, you know, we also have Abby Wilson down there, who is a very consistent uh, player, um, and I, I think I can say that over the past two years coaching her, she's very consistent on the field. You don't really expect mistakes from Abby out there, uh, and we challenged her this year to be a little bit more risky. We want her to come up with with big plays on on the defensive side of the field. You know, she's a player whose name's never going to show up in the box score, but she is a huge impact for us down there. And, um, April, Abby, and Kelsey have been doing a phenomenal job at leading some of our uh, underclassmen. We have a lot of freshmen in the midfield, and then we also have Grayson Corbin and Carolyn Carrera who are going to be down there in the defensive end as freshmen. So it's a lot to learn. The pace of play is a lot quicker, and they've been doing a great job. And uh, can't forget about Shelby. Shelby is, has been down there starting since her freshman year, and it's been really fun to watch her grow into that leadership role as a junior. So. Defensively, there's a lot of veteran play, but then there's also a lot of underclassmen who have really, you know, picked up their intensity level and their focus during practice as season's coming. So we're really excited about the defensive side of, of the field, and Emily and, and Mike have been doing a great job uh, down there with them, and the players really respect them and, and listen to them. And, you know, and then we transition into the offensive side of the field, and returning Britain is a, is a huge plus for us. Uh, she's done such a great job at, you know, leading the offense and, and being that go-to player for us. And uh, this year we're really focusing on forming that team offense where we have seven players that at any point in time they can score a goal and they can be, you know, scoring threats for us because, you know, Britain's such a, a – tremendous player um, in her dodging and, and her feeding ability uh, that we're trying to make her overall more well-rounded well and I think that's something that we gave Britain a focus on is being able to dodge from up top, being able to cut in the middle. So she's been doing a great job at that, of changing that up and, and really, you know, seeing that fire in her eyes just like April has. You know, they want to win this year and they're two phenomenal players and they're going to graduate as, you know, two of the most decorated players to graduate Hofstra, but I think it would even be more special for them to leave here with the CAA championship and with that birth into the NCAA tournament. And, Coach Katie Mall has been doing a great job with our offense. You know, she has a lot of young kids as well that she's leading on the offensive side of the field with the midfielders and, and the attackers. So it's been really fun to watch them develop and, and watch some of our kids who maybe didn't weren't that big of impact players last year really step up for us on the offensive side of the field this year with Morgan Knox, Tiana Perella, and, and Sam Lennox, and a lot of our, our, our freshmen are stepping up, so it's fun to watch. Oh, you obviously sound very excited, <laughs> very excited, probably more than I think I've ever seen you in the three years here, but when you look at that midfield again and go more towards the offense, you mentioned a name like Sam Lennox who last year took on such a bigger impact and she really made that impact, starting to find you know the back of the net. What do you expect from her this year? We really want her to come uh, out of her shell, and we had a conversation with her last week that, you know, this is your last season here, you have to leave it all on the table. Um, you know, every practice, every game, because there is no next year. You can't turn to next year. This is this is it for you, Sam. And you know, I think she this past weekend went a few scrimmages, and you could see um, her confidence come through. And I haven't seen that from Sam um, in the two years of coaching here. So we're really excited to see her, and hopefully, this can really uh, boost her confidence going into our, our first game this week. Went to the midfield, Lindsay Alfano. You moved her up to the midfield last year, and really, actually, you liked her in that role. And Becky Tonto comes back and battled some injury last year. She comes back to this roster. What do you expect from those two? Lindsay Alfano was put in a very interesting position this year. She transitioned from defense. I mean, last year we asked her to play in the midfield last year, and she welcomed five freshmen this year in the midfield with her. Um, and if she takes two steps to the left, the freshman takes two steps to the left. They follow her everywhere. She's been doing a great job at, at being a mentor to them and to watch the growth of their play uh, from September to where we are now has been tremendous. So uh, I'm so lucky to have Lindsay in the midfield. We're so lucky to have her. And um, the midfielders are lucky to have Lindsay there as well. She's just been doing a phenomenal job at, at being a great leader for them, both on the offensive side and the the defensive side. Well, let's look at this weekend. Obviously, season finally starts. UNH here at home. It's going to be cold this weekend. So, again, Hofter Women's Lacrosse seems like you guys never get a sunny game out there. What do you expect in this weekend? 
you know, it, first game jitters, that you know, you can always expect that. It's going to take a little time to settle in, but hopefully um, with our scrimmages that we had this past week and we've got some of that out of us and we're going to really practice this hard this week and focus on ourselves. We want to be able to push the ball in transition, uh, run our sets on offense and, and score goals. Uh, that's one thing that we're really emphasizing this year, score a lot of goals and, and defensively be able to play, you know, a sound defense, stick to the game plan that isn't, that is in place with the coaching staff and, and come out with the victory. But UNH is a very well-coached team. Um, they got phenomenal players. So it, it's going to be a tough battle, especially game one. Um, you can never know what to expect with this game one. And, and the players are nervous. They have their jitters. But hopefully we can get that out of the way and really settle down within the first 10 minutes of the game. Well, the journey for a CAA championship starts this Saturday, 3 o'clock, at James M. Stewart Stadium. Obviously, it's going to be cold, but come on out and support them. If not, catch all the action on a Hofstra Pride Sports Network. She's Sandy Smith. I'm Dan Saffrino. We'll catch you next week, Pride fans.